Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how we've created a pickleball court on a concrete slab in our backyard. I used the Sportmaster Picklemaster product line, and no, I was not sponsored to do this. I did like the product, but uh, they probably don't necessarily like me showing everyone how to do this because I'm just an amateur. I think the overall product turned out really good, but you'll see that the stress relief lines that I filled in do show up after a year or two of Albuquerque's winter summer cycles. This is mainly because our slab was not intended to be a bona fide pickleball court. It's four inches thick, three KSI concrete with a wire mesh embedded. So there's no rebar or anything like that. But regardless, maybe you can learn something from what I did or didn't do. So enjoy. Okay, so check it out. Here we are at the court, or what will be the court. You can see we have a concrete slab here. It's uh, 54 feet by 30 feet. It's a little less than what's recommended for uh, most pickleball courts. They actually want it to be 60 feet long, but you can only do so much with the space that you have. But this is cured for a couple months. They say to let it cure for about 28 days minimum. And uh, it has a, the correct finish, medium broom finish. and. Uh, First thing we got to do actually is before we do the etching is actually remove some of the debris from the kids and just from it sitting out here all summer so that's what we're going to do next is uh clean it up <laughs> all right so you can see here we went ahead and uh tried to get all the water well not the water the debris and the dirt that's accumulated in these uh stress relief lines out and uh, we're gonna let it dry here so that uh, we can come back and, and sweep it up a little bit easier. I'm not exactly sure how the uh, stress lines are gonna do over the long term because we're gonna fill all those in and we'll see if it ends up cracking. I mean, that's the whole point of them is to provide a place for a controlled crack to begin. So we'll see. This was a, uh, a gift from the government during the uh, COVID pandemic. We have a million kids so uh, we got quite a quite a bit of a uh, federal relief and we decided to turn it into something a little more concrete if you know what i mean anyways we'll we'll, be, we'll check back in here in a in a few minutes once this uh, water is dried off okay so we've sprayed this down uh, as you'll see in the video obviously uh we started off with the broom but then went to the blower because sweeping is the worst but apparently there's a lot of dirt in those cracks, so it took a long time. But the next step is uh, to, uh, to etch the cement with, uh, with acid. So we got muriatic acid here. And uh, they say you're supposed to, you know, fill it with water first and then put the acid in so it doesn't just get all over you. I don't want to turn into the Joker from Batman here. Let's see here. So we want to go a gallon. Got about a hundred, hundred kinks here, so let's try that. Oh, come on! Hi, Dad. Hey, Julie. Does that look like a gallon to you? Nope. Almost there. Do that go up to about there. Just fill it up with. Probably old pesticide or something. Anyway, so it says one pint per gallon. So let's uh, try this out. I probably don't want to don't want to drink this stuff or anything. Probably better if I had safety goggles on. Maybe yeah. There you go. Way to smart move, Sammy. Okay. When I get to a pint in your mind, you let me know and I'll turn it off. Okay. Yeah, it's probably good. Trained eye right there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna spray this on there and let it sit for about five minutes, and then we'll spray it off with the with the hose here. Okay, so we just etched the court. Uh, supposedly, it's supposed to be kind of like a chemical sandpaper. It's supposed to open up all the pores, really allow the concrete to adhere real nicely to the acrylic that we're about to put down. But uh, a couple of interesting things, to me at least, uh, you know, it is real bubbly. You can tell there's a chemical reaction going on, but we live in Albuquerque where most of the soil comes from decomposed granite, which is alkaline. So 
So, you know, who knew? It's gonna. Hopefully, it didn't. Hopefully, all the uh, sand that I that I blew out of the cracks, and then wasn't able to successfully get out, didn't just like neutralize the acid before it started doing its business on the uh, on the court. But I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just happy that I followed the instructions. You know what I mean? So, uh, next step is to apply the uh, the crack filler stuff. So I gotta go through, and that's gonna. You know, this took forever, and I'm pretty sure the next step is going to take even longer. Should be a real doozy. Okay. So, we're getting near the end of uh, the crack filling. Do you ever want to do something that makes you question your life decisions? This is probably it. This was brutal. Why don't you take a Take a look at that. Hands and knees the entire time, your hands. Probably a better way to do this, or just don't do it at all. My goodness sakes, this is horrendous. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll all be worth it at the end. Or we'll have a nice uh, nice documentary of what not to do. But let me show you the technique. Come on down here, Sandy. So you just basically shove this boot into these holes, into these cracks. I get it down there as deep as you can, fill the whole thing as much as you can, and then I try to scrape it all off so you get a nice smooth finish across. Okay, so we filled in all the cracks. You can kind of see our work. The uh, cord is clean. It is now ready for the acrylic adhesion promoter, which we're going to apply with this with this roller. Which, looking at the size of this roller, makes me a little concerned that it also could take a considerable amount of time, but. We'll see what we can do. Um, basically, I have two five-gallon buckets. We're just gonna put a quick coat on, and then we'll come back tomorrow, and we'll we'll start doing the next step in the process. So I just brushed on, or I guess rolled on the first square here, and it's taking a long time. No, it wasn't taking that long, but the stuff's so liquid. It's not like a paint; it's more like water almost. So I figure I'm gonna try spraying it. We'll see what happens. Hi, we're ready. We uh, we prepared the court. We put down the primer. We've etched it. We're now ready to, ready to put down some acrylic resurfacer here with this large squeegee, and luckily I got my brother-in-law, Troy, I'm here, <laughs> to help out. We even uh, we even taped the edges because I thought it might look nicer on the edges, but uh, this is it, folks. This is where it gets very real. Okay, so the instructions say 10 gallons of the resurfacer to four gallons of water. We just took a five gallon bucket, divided it into two, and now I'm gonna dump in one gallon per bucket. <laughs> White probably wasn't the best color to be wearing with this uh, particular color. It's pretty thin now, I don't know. <laughs> that's, what the, uh, that's what the instructions say, so I suppose we'll stick with it. You're wishing that you had uh, taken me up on my offer now. Oh, I'm glad I got gray shorts on. <laughs> So we put down the acrylic resurfacer, and it did a pretty pretty good job. But as you can see, we've let the kids play on it for a couple days now. They they took some rocks and started drawing on it. They played basketball and those type of things, which is good. Probably not the best. Hey, you're we're trying not to paint to play it. <laughs> but I want to show you a couple mistakes that I made to prevent you from making mistakes in the future, because I'm learning, and uh, the next coat should be a lot better. So come on down here, Sammy. Lesson number one: never ever try to touch the paint when it's halfway dry you get it just kind of drags it and it's no good the other thing is never go thick so what i'm going to try to do today is try to sand down a couple of these high spots right here you just got to take your time you know what i mean 
I was getting too cocky. It started going too fast. And so there's a couple lines throughout the court that I'm going to try to sand down. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I figure I might as well try. So we'll, we'll film me uh, sanding and we'll show you the results, see if you like it or not. Go. Okay, so we got our orbital sander with a 60 grit to try to take off as much material as we can. Come on down here though. I'm not sure I like what I see here. Um, I just don't know if that's going to be a good idea or a bad idea. And I'm hesitant to do it while uh, on this court. But come on over here. This is where it actually is effective. You'll see like this little spot here where there's some high points. Mostly sand. We'll just... I call it real nice right there mm -hmm. but the question is how much do I actually want to do this not not a lot that's the problem Check it out, we got the whole paint, the whole court painted blue. Actually it looks pretty dang good. I'm pretty happy about it. There's a couple streaks in here. See like right here. That uh, I uh, that are left over from the from the the base coat. But you know you learn as you go along and that's just part of the thing. Maybe I'll be able to prevent that from the future, you know, from you doing that in the future. But basically. You just got to make sure there's no streaks. If you see a streak, you got to go back and get it right away. You can't let it dry. If you let it dry and then you try to come back with that squeegee, it's just going to drag the existing paint and kind of rip it or tear it almost. So you got to get it right away. You got to take your time. I just went too fast on that second coat of the uh, of the of the base coat. So the other thing we learned is to come on down here is we taped the edge here of the court because I wanted it to have a nice straight line, but I'm a little worried now for longevity that uh, you'll see here, you got this lip. I can totally see the kids coming through here with their little fingers and tearing it up and then it just kind of create little, little divots or whatever, but that doesn't look good. Okay, we're ready to paint the lines on the court now. And the guy at the store said, you can do everything else wrong. And as long as you do the, the lines correctly, nobody will notice the other stuff. And conversely, if you screw up the lines after you've made this beautiful blue cord, that's all anybody's going to look at. So this is the most important step. And uh, what we're going to do, because I didn't want to pay for the, uh, the, uh, the court line taping machine, which costs upwards of $2,000, um, we're going to use this here uh, chalk liner. We're just gonna measure from the edge of the court and measure 20 feet wide, 44 feet long, and and snap the lines with the chalk. The problem is, I don't want the chalk to be permanent. And the uh, the one that comes with the chalk liner is a uh, number one in terms of permanency. It's also blue. So I'm not sure how well that's gonna work on the blue court. So I bought this other stuff too, which is a number two in terms of permanency, which is orange, Boise State colors, which not great as a BYU fan, but we'll get over it, I guess. Check it out. We got the we got the tape down. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm cutting out where the tape overlaps. So, for instance, I've made this little center mark right here. Whoops. We got to cut out this little part right here, and I'm just using a a razor blade. I couldn't find my normal utility knife, but basically you just come down here like this. Cut that. Make a little nice incision there.
close at the little niblet. There you go. So you can see you got a nice, nice line there. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna put down, I forgot the name of the, you put down like a pre-coat to make sure it doesn't bleed underneath the lines and then you put down the, the paint on top of that. So there you go, let's check the, uh, the other thing, it's always wise to make sure you check measurements, right? So in theory, this should be seven feet to the center. Lo and behold, Okay, I've cut all the lines, they are ready. I've washed it by hand with a rag. You'll probably see that in the high speed video. There's probably a better way to do that, but we're about ready to put down the stripe right. And you can see we're gonna have somebody just kind of squeeze a little bead of the material and then another person will come back and roll it right over there with that thing. So with the help of my lovely assistant, hopefully we'll get the stripe right, right. And then we'll, uh, transition to the actual paint this is this is making me nervous because this is you could screw everything up right here and all the hard work we put up to this point could be for not let's do it okay so we just put down the stripe right we're moving to the paint this is where it gets extremely real that was good practice basically we just squeezed a little line and then somebody came back around but what you can maybe see from the wind or from the trees is that it's pretty windy and we were splattering some of this stuff. I'm getting concerned that we may get some splatter of white paint onto the court. But usually what I do is just charge forward and then regret it for the rest of my life. So we have a real big decision to make here. Okay, so we, we just painted all the lines. Now's the moment of truth. We're about to pull up the tape. This is it. Let's do this. Come here, we gotta check this out. This is incredible. We just pulled up the tape. Look at that job. You couldn't pay somebody to do a better job. Maybe you could, maybe a professional with some more experience could definitely do it better. Along the edges on some of the stripe, you can see a little bit of stuff where it weeped under the tape, but give me a break. I mean, it looks dang good from up here. You also notice we're about to put on a uh, some basketball lines. We'll, you know, we'll include that free of charge in this video too. But uh, we decided to do the pickleball for now. Okay, so check it out. We got the pickleball lines are down. Now we're going to put down some basketball lines. You can see that we have the key already in place. It's 12 feet wide, 15 feet from the backboard. But now is the hard part. Now we got to do some curvature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tape measure, which I drilled a hole in. You can see that. And I found this old patio base, patio umbrella base. I'm going to stick this in. Fulcrum. And then we're just going to go along like this and mark the lines with the pencil. So. It's supposed to be a six foot radius here. I think I'm gonna do that first and then base the three point line off of that. Hopefully it's still 19 feet, 19 feet nine inches from the uh, center of the hoop. But even if it's off a little bit, I don't think anybody will notice or nobody's gonna be coming out here with a tape measure. Are we going college, MBA? We're, we're going high school. High school, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, high school. We're not professionals here, so. Okay, so we just got the, the key art put into place. Now, you said, if you recall, I was a little worried that the distance from the arc to where the actual three-point line was gonna be a little bit off, but I want you to come here and take a look at this. So, I measured with a ghetto plumb bob, which was basically just a string and a little weight that I put on there, straight down here and made a mark where the backboard is. Now the center of the hoop is supposed to be 15 inches from this mark, which is where I put this fulcrum. So that means for a high school basketball three-point line, it should be 19 feet, nine inches. 
but since I put it at two inches, our line should be at 19 feet, 11 inches. Let's take a look. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what can I say? Thanks so much for coming along on the journey here. Uh, we're finished up here. You can take a look at all the footprints from the kids playing on the court. And they were eating cornbread, there was cornbread crumbs all over the place. I told my wife that we're gonna institute a no food on the court policy. She just laughed and rolled her eyes, but that's okay. Anyways, I think the uh, dirt on the court won't be such an issue once we get gravel put in place. And really, before we can really use the court, too much we need to put some fence you know right here on the west side and then on the north side but uh, maybe that'll be another video this was just so much fun we got to try it again right um, anyways one last tip for people who are actually trying to do this themselves is make sure you put a heavy dosage of that stripe right down come here Sam you can take a look here so you can see there's a little bit of weeping underneath this line we did the white lines before we did the uh, the basketball lines and if you were to look at the basketball lines these guys are crisp just real pretty real nice but anyways overall I'm super satisfied looks really good the kids love playing out here last night hopefully it lasts for many years to come well here we are two and a half years in the future why don't we go ahead and show them the court here, Vince. You can see that we added some rock, added some lights, added the fence, really finished off the area really nicely, but you're not, you don't really care so much about that. You care about the state of the pickleball court itself. And in terms of the preparation that we did, it's adhering really well, very few blemishes or anything like that. But the one thing that we were really concerned about was were the cracks going to appear along those stress relief lines? And sure enough, they did. So come on down here and take a peek at this. So you can see here, there's the crack that has appeared after two and a half years of uh, these Albuquerque winters with the freeze thaw cycles that are going on here. But you know what? This is a backyard pickleball court. I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it'll last a long time. Um, in terms of the preparation, the only thing we could have done differently is paid a lot more for a better concrete slab, thicker, or uh, they have those systems that will actually put the, the cord into compression, but they cost a lot, and I didn't want to have to fork out the dough for that. So anyways, here we are. That's what we got. DIY pickleball court, basketball court. Thanks. Thanks for watching.